This question is probably one of the most obvious instances of my favorite strategy for the PSAT and SAT, plug points into equations. It is really obvious. We are given points, we are given equations. There should be no second guessing. Just plug the points in. And let's start with the easier point, right? Let's start with zero, negative five, because zero is a really easy number to plug into things. And some of you may be looking at these equations and recognize that they fit the y equals mx plus b format of a, um, of a line. And so the b is the y-intercept, which is where the x is always equal to zero. So they're kind of giving us the y-intercept. But even if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you still know how to plug zero in, right? So just for choice A, for example, we can plug in and we would, uh, the way I would do it is I would actually, um, yeah, I'll plug in for y. So negative five is the y is equal to negative zero plus one fourth. Well, negative zero is just zero. And then plus one fourth is one fourth, but it's not negative five. And so that's the key is I'm not even going to finish all the math in some of these. I'm just going to like notice that it doesn't work out and, and get rid of the choice. So A is gone. So if we do the same thing with, with B, we'd have negative five is equal to one fourth of zero minus five. Well, one fourth of zero is gone, right? Because zero just cancels that out. So this works, but we have to keep going because it's possible that that point works in multiple answers. So this one would be negative five is equal to four. That's not true, so that's gone. But then negative five is equal to four times zero minus five. So again, the zero cancels out that first bit, but it does work out that negative five is equal to negative five. So B and D both work. But I don't, I'm not bothered by that. That that took me like three seconds. I, I showed way more work to you than I would have done in my head because I'm comfortable plugging in zero, but I'm very quickly down to two choices. Now I would just say, all right, let's do this other point. And so just do B and D. We've already gotten rid of A and C. We don't need to test them again. So negative one is equal to one fourth of one minus five. Well, one fourth of one is one fourth. So... I could continue this. I could get common denominators if I want to do this by hand. I could put this in the calculator if I wanted to, but I'm just smart enough to know that one fourth minus five is not going to give me negative one. It's going to be its own little fraction. It's going to be weird. So that's not what I want. So I'm not going to bother doing math that I already know is off track. So let's try D though. Let's be really sure. Negative one is equal to four times one minus five. So negative one is equal to four minus five. That is true, right? Four minus five, negative one. So proof now that D is the answer. Um, again, I'm showing you more work with this plug points into equation strategy than I probably would have done myself on the actual test. I'm just trying to show you what goes on in my head. But the benefit of having zero and one as X is that it's not a lot of work. You can do a lot of that mental math in your head. The, the way that I think they want you to do this, and I'm curious, you can comment if I'm right, that the College Board or Khan Academy explanations are probably gonna tell you to take these two points and use the slope formula, y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. And, and think about the slope because, you know, that's we have two points, we might as well, these are all linear equations, so we could do that. Now, if you do that wrong, if you, for example, switch these, and put the X on top because X is the first letter in the alphabet compared to Y, right? It comes first, so you wanna put it on top. If you do that wrong, think about what your slope is gonna be. It's not gonna be four over one, which is what we found it to be by plugging in. It's going to be one over four. And look at that right there. The other answer we were considering has one over four as the slope. So when we plug points into equations, that trap didn't really appear as a trap, right? We, we didn't eliminate it right away, but I didn't consider that that choice really until I had done all the work for the next point. But the SAT knows that if you do some of this algebraically, there are some common mistakes that people make, especially with slope formula. So they're hoping you make them, and then they're gonna put that wrong answer there so that when you do make the mistake, you don't notice because you're so confident that your answer is one of the answers. So you gotta just try whatever you can to not let them trick you like that. And plug points into equations is probably the best tool that we have to avoid those kinds of algebra traps. So as much as possible, even when you know how to do it the algebra way, I strongly recommend switching yourself over to this new strategy. I think in the long run, it'll get you more questions right by just getting things to be easier, but also to avoid those trap answers that are being set for you so you don't fall into them unknowingly.